Howdy friends, Pete here. I spent a lot of time over the last week going through some missions received at coplock.org and saw a pattern that I thought worth mentioning. That pattern was this. First, a police employee driving their road pirate vehicle struck a pedestrian, bicyclist, or other motorist. And second, another actor in the injustice system who, who claimed to stand for truth and transparency instead side with that police employee and grant them impunity, which means exemption or freedom from punishment. Let me give you just a handful of examples. New York City, 40th Avenue in Queens. Royo Ayamoda, a Japanese foreign exchange student, was run over as he crossed the street. The vehicle that struck him was driven by Darren Ilardi. Ilardi, a New York City police employee, claimed that he was driving 70 miles per hour with his lights and sirens on, but eyewitnesses say otherwise. Yet police employees never interviewed those witnesses, and they failed to measure the skid marks, and they didn't even attempt to retrieve information from the police vehicle's data recorder before it had been erased. Might that investigation have gone different if the person struck and killed had worn an NYPD badge? After the incident, Ilardi's colleagues within the NYPD refused to release footage of the incident. Eventually, though, vocal outcry forced police to release some video, which seemed to support Ilardi's narrative. Yet, when New York Housing Authority surveillance camera footage was located, it became clear that the NYPD footage had been doctored. Not only did Ilardi strike and kill a person, his colleagues attempted to cover it up. Oyamati's family is still seeking justice, and Ilardi, well, he's still working for the NYPD. He was granted impunity. Kern County, California. John Swearingen, traveling at almost twice the posted speed limit, hit and killed two people who were pushing a motorcycle. Employees of the California Highway Patrol did an investigation and concluded that Swearingen showed gross negligence and noted that Swearingen had patrolled the area for four years and was familiar to seeing pedestrians in the area, that Swearingen was traveling at 84.9 miles per hour on a roadway posted with a 45 mile speed limit, and that Swearingen had not chosen to activate his emergency lights or siren despite being en route to a call that mandated such actions. Swearingen took the lives of two people Crystal Jolly, a 30-year-old who left behind three kids and a husband, and Daniel Hiller, a 25-year-old who left behind two toddlers and a fiancé. For his actions, those in the community were told they had to fork over almost $9 million. Swearingen, on the other hand, took a plea deal and will do community service. He's still employed at the Kern County Sheriff's Outfit. Erie, Pennsylvania. Frederick Shrimp, who wears a Pennsylvania State Police badge, was traveling in a 2013 Ford Explorer. For whatever reason, he decided not to stop at an intersection at Route 98, despite the fact that two stop signs, one on each side of the road, faced him. Shrimp's three-ton vehicle drove into the path of a Suzuki Kizahi. The driver of that vehicle, 57-year-old Donna Platts, who was on her way to work, was killed instantly. After the incident, the district attorney, Jack Denary, tried to placate and claimed that the incident would be investigated like would any other fatality. Yet two months later, his actions demonstrated his true intentions. Despite killing a woman, Denary said that Shrimp would only be cited for careless driving and running a stop sign. Shrimp is still employed at the Pennsylvania State Police. The impunity granted to Shrimp was one thing cited by the gentleman who recently founded Erie Cop Block. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Joseph Quills, who wears a Milwaukee County Sheriff's Outfit badge, rolled through a stop sign and T-boned a vehicle driven by 25-year-old Tana Weicker. Weicker's vehicle spun into a tree, and she was knocked out. When she came to, she was in pain. Police asked Weicker if she'd been drinking, but she was unable to take a breath test or field sobriety test as four of her vertebrae in her neck were broken. Still, Quills arrested Weicker for drunk driving. Months later, though, tests taken showed that Weicker had been sober, yet it wasn't until Quills changed his story that the threats levied against her were dropped. Did Quills have a change of heart? Did he want a clean conscience? No. He was told that a video of the accident existed. He then acknowledged that his early report was wrong. That video, captured by a camera on the outskirts of the airport, proved that Quill's initial story was false. That in fact it was he who ran the stop sign and hit Weicker's vehicle, then lied about who was responsible. Was that enough to get Quills fired? Nope. He's still employed with the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Outfit. Weicker has filed suit against Quills hoping to recoup some of the expenses for her medical bills. Los Angeles County. Andrew Francis Wood, employed at the L.A. County Sheriff's Outfit, was driving east on Mulholland. Wood was apparently not driving too well, though, perhaps because he was typing into his MDT, the laptop in his vehicle, as he struck a bicyclist, who was flung onto the hood of his vehicle and slammed into the windshield. 
That bicyclist, Milton Olin Jr., former COO of Napster, died on scene. Using a wireless device while driving in that area is said to be illegal, supposedly to help deter such accidents, but Wood did not face any repercussions. Why? Because he wore a badge. The good people at the L.A. County DA's office cited some legalese to apply impunity to Wood. Despite taking the life of another human, Wood continues to be employed at the L.A. County Sheriff's Outfit. Olin's family is suing. Their lawyer, Bruce Broilett, stated the obvious. Once again, we see the government protecting its own. So what's to be done? Should we never travel the roadways, knowing that a police employee may try to pirate you, or may cause an accident, or even a fatality, and not be held accountable? Of course not. But it does underscore the value in having a dash cam. If you don't yet have a dash cam, head over to copblock.org cameras for some suggestions. Also, these examples of impunity granted to police employees who, while driving, strike and injure or kill other people should make clear to you the pattern of unaccountability that is built into the entire injustice system. Think about it. How likely is it that a person or outfit will ever be transparent or that they can ever bring about justice when the foundation of their very structure is based on coercion?